Welcome back to the Melodic Caring Project. Today we travel to Los Angeles to tour the studio of composer Nathan Barr. During this interview, it dawns on us this is so much more than a studio. It's a temple dedicated to the power of music. Take a walk with us and enjoy an incredible song dedicated to our rock stars and hospitals around the country. <laughs> Joining us from LA, California, we have composer Nathan Barr. Nathan, thank you so much for joining us. How are things? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to show everyone my studio today. Man, your space is amazing. Uh, I can't wait for the rock stars and for just everybody to, to get a sneak peek into what your day-to-day -day is. I'm curious, what? tell me about that though. Right now, what is your day-to-day? -day? I mean, with the way things are going. Yeah, I mean, it's so different right now. I have been working on a couple shows. I just finished a show on Netflix called Hollywood and a show on Hulu called The Great. So I, I have had work here, but my staff has spent at the houses uh, quarantining. So we've been going back and forth that way. So I have my two dogs here who keep me company and it's been interesting. So. So you, but you still have your time, your space. How, how have you found this time? Has it been inspiring or has it been almost, you know, kind of too much emotion to process to be inspired by it? I think it's like a little bit of both. I think it, in the first, uh, I think the first phase of it was kind of uh, uh, really sort of otherworldly and strange. And then once I got used to it, then I, I sort of found my creativity again and just have run with it and gone from there and it's been okay, so. Okay. Good. Do you, I'm curious, you know, just with your experience with creating and composing, do you think that right now you're kind of backlogging inspiration that's going to come out in a torrent later once you've had a chance to process or? I mean, yeah, maybe that's very possible. It's a, you know, like all of us, I've never been through anything like this before. So it's hard to say what, what will come, but uh, I, I think it's certainly a possibility that that'll, that'll happen. One question to answer before we get a tour of your amazing studio, you use music in a in a kind of a specific way right you use it to create mood or set a you know set a mood for a theme or a specific feeling that's trying to be delivered uh, on a film what can you tell me in one word what music means to you what music means in one word yeah uh i guess i would just use two words i'd say emotional connection um i think it's it's such a beautiful way for people to connect, even if they don't speak the same language with their mouths. Uh, music is just something, if, if I sit down to an instrument and someone sits down to another instrument we've never met before, we can create something together without have, being able to speak to, a, to each other directly. And that, that is all about, to me, emotional connection. Yeah, I love that. It makes total sense. <clears throat> Cool. Well, show us around. Let's see your incredible yeah. space. Yeah, so this, this entire building is built around a big instrument. It's a pipe organ that was built in the 20s. <clears throat> that was a big part of Hollywood history, but I'll talk about that later. I'll start right here. Uh, this is a calliophone, it's called. It's, it's basically an indoor calliope. Calliopes were usually had steam uh, driving uh, sound, uh, air through the pipes and they're very loud. So this is an indoor one. So it's got a role player, like a player piano, and I'll just turn it on and let it play by itself for a minute so you can hear how it sounds. <laughs> whistles uh, and, and air blows through as, the, as you play the key and that creates a sound and so it's, it's got this really amazing sound these were originally used on steamships back in the day to let people know that they were coming into town so someone would be playing the keyboard be super loud and everyone would go oh the ferry's coming we better go down to the go down to the shore so that's like a special special instrument that I really like that's um, incredible <laughs> yeah thanks this is a little uh, <clears throat> a little barrel piano um, so it's a uh, these are all mechanical musical instruments. So they're, they're instruments that use mechanical means to make music. So as you can see, there's this uh, barrel here that looks like a music box. And when I turn this crank, wrong C 
reason, but kind of an interesting sound. Uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's probably from the the fifties or sixties, and uh, just another mechanical musical instrument. Um, this one, this one is really special that I just got. Um, this is from seventeen ninety, so it's really old, and it's the same kind of technology. You've got all these little pins in this wooden barrel, and I basically have this really heavy weight here, and if I crank up the weight like that and then I trip it, it's going to sound a little funky, it's not feeling very well right now, but uh, if, I, if I go ahead and let it turn, you'll hear it will make sound, it will make music. Kind of. Isn't that cool? That's incredible. I mean, it's literally, if you close your eyes, it's like being transported back in time, you know? Yeah, so this, really interestingly, this would have gone on a desk, like a musical desk. So this would have been hidden in a, in a, in a big, uh, like, like sort of a dresser. And every time you open the desk, it would trigger this. Oh, and it would turn on. A little bit of music to play, yeah. That's, uh, inc where do you find these pieces at? I mean, you can't, you're you know, not, just, I've been, not like, going to musician's friend to pick these up. Yeah, it's, you just gotta know where to look, like online, uh, there, there are, uh, groups of people that collect these things, so you just you yeah. find out they're up for sale. And, um, so this is uh, from the early 1900s. Uh, it's called an orchestrion, and again, this is mechanical music. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trip it, and you'll see that it has a lot of instruments beyond just a piano to make music in it. Oh, take that off and see all the drums in there. Wow. <laughs> Which is pretty amazing. So what I'll do now is... And there's a little... Kind of concept as a player piano where it has perforated paper drums to right? exactly to right. yeah exactly right and it, this uses vacuum so it uses suction to pull air through this system and then every one of these cables goes to a different instrument and they just got creative and said well wh why not do this to more than just a piano hammer and so they, they added drums and stuff man that's amazing now i feel like i have obviously completely undersold your space by calling it a studio you have a museum and a studio and yeah. a yeah <laughs> So this is uh, so this is an instrument that Ben Franklin invented. Uh, it was his supposedly his favorite instrument, and I just absolutely love it. Um, it's called a glass harmonica. So if you think of the word harmonica, get rid of the H and harmonica. And it's a series of crystal cups, and the pitch is determined by the size. But if I put water on my fingers, no way. Isn't that cool? Beautiful? It's gorgeous. It's, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it makes me think of, of the, uh, like the sonic healing, the bowls, right? That you can use yeah, to absolutely. create those frequencies like and pitches. In, in his day, it would have been pedaled, not, not with a motor, but today we can use this silent motor. And um, some of them were quite big and very few. This is not an original. It's a replica. The originals are very hard to find because they're so fragile over the centuries. They've, they've been destroyed. But... Um, yeah, it's just a really special instrument. And Ben Franklin used to accompany his daughter, so he would play this at his daughter. That's incredible. Yeah. So I know, I know that at the beginning we said, you know, let's try to keep this around 20 minutes. Why don't we just yeah. take that and just throw that right out the window, and you just okay. give us the tour you want to give us, because this is unreal. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, so over here uh, we have an instrument called a nickel harpa, uh, which is from Sweden, and it's a very old design a couple hundred years maybe more it's a keyed fiddle basically so if i play it it sounds it's got this beautiful sound to it that beautiful so it's got uh, 
Um, it's incredible. Are they? Is it? The, is it? Are they hammers then that you're keying? To... Yeah. So basically, there's an instrument I'm going to show you next called a hurdy gurdy, and that instrument also employs these keys. And as you can see, when I press this wood key, it presses this dowel into the string, and that's how you do it. So instead of your finger touching the string. It's got this really beautiful open sound because of these sympathetic strings in between your main strings, and those vibrate when you play these strings. So it's got yeah. Yeah. I can't decide if I'm more impressed that you have it or that you know how to play it, or maybe both all at the same time. Well, you know, it's funny. Like it's I play cello and I play guitar, so. I already had this thing going, and then the bow just goes from here on a cello up to here. And so I kind of picked it up and just played it. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it's incredible, man. Um, so this is a hurdy-gurdy, which is the instrument I just talked about over there. And as you can see, it has the same kind of key that presses this dowel into the string. It's the same te technology. I like to say these were popular for like 10 seconds 500 years ago. Uh, you'll, you'll recognize uh, it makes a sound a lot like a bagpipe. So you've got this drone. I turn this wheel. And it plays these strings. And then I can play a melody like a bagpipe. It just out. evokes such a feeling to it, you know? It's yeah, it does. It totally does. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a, it was just a really cool instrument. It showed up uh, in Europe, um, and it was it was uh, very quickly, I think, relegated to the streets. So people who, if you, like, you see people asking for money these days in the streets, they'd often be playing this, which is pretty pretty interesting. Is it... Is it... <clears throat> Middle Eastern origin or European? No, or? I think it's European. I think sort of Germany. Um, I would, if I had to guess, it's Germany somewhere or Central Europe somewhere. Um, and, and they would have shown up really a long time ago. They, they came sort of out of the Middle Ages. So uh, it's a really special, special and very um, uh, ancient sound. Um, yeah, this is, um, this, is a, um, this is a human bone trumpet from Tibet. It's called a Kanglang. And basically some monks, when they passed away, they wanted their bones to be turned into relics. And so they would basically turn these into musical instruments. Um, and uh, they're, they're not uncommon. Uh, and they're played, still played in Tibet during uh, various ceremonies. And they make a pretty um, raucous sound. I'm not even gonna try and play it right now. I, I've had some trumpet player friends try and play it. And it's, it's more for an effect than for music. Um, but uh, they basically hollow the bone out, and then they put caps and these little jewels and stones on it, and it becomes sort of something that's used in ceremonies. Is... Wow, it's like the ancient version of the organ donor program. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> is, there, is there any information on the actual monk that donated the leg? I, no, not, not really. Yeah, it's pretty funny. They, I mean, they, I think that probably goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. So these, these do exist if you know where to look for them. Um, and if you look up Kanglang online, you can actually see monks playing them. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, so this instrument is uh, called an array embira, and it's a series of metal spokes. And this instrument sort of originates in Africa. Um, uh, all you needed were a couple scraps of metal, and in, in the case of Africa, a gourd. And then you mounted those to the top, and you get this beautiful sort of sounding, it's called a thumb piano or a kalimba. Isn't that cool? Incredible. So I have a kalimba and it's, I, I think do, it's yeah. five tangs, right? I mean, it's, I've never yeah. seen one so big. So is that multiple keys then? It's not just in yeah, C. Yeah, so you've got basically four octaves. You got. You've got these great bass notes, 
and you typically plug this one in. Uh, but yeah, it's got it, the, the people who really know how to play it. They can really make it sing. It's it's so beautiful. Wow. So that's then there's it has a pickup on it. You plug that in and it you does. can. Yeah, it's got yeah, it's got a pickup under here, and then you've got these two outputs here, and so you can do a stereo, wow. stereo image of it. And I put it on a desk because the desk acts as a resonator, so you could kind of get a little bit more volume when you're not plugged oh, in. Got it. I took it away. Now listen. Yeah, got it, got it. So my kalimba has a little rice paper drum that it sits on, right? So like you say, it has a resonator built into it. Yeah, yeah, basically. So, um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, and then I've got um, a lot of a, sort of a wall of unusual. I recognize those, except for maybe the banjo-looking thing in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So this is a this is a speaking of all the great ways people made music. So this is a basically a pumpkin. Uh, it's a gourd and they basically uh, some guy saw him playing it online I said oh I got to get one of those because I'm a cellist and so um, it's basically <clears throat> a pumpkin cello and it, it's got an interesting sound <laughs> it's got kind of a you know very very um, uh, rustic sound but it's cool yeah that's super cool. So where uh, where Cinderella would turn a pumpkin into a carriage, this is your fairy godmother version. Yeah, of, yeah of exactly. I like that. Uh, this is a this is a bowed guitar. It's an electric guitar, and it has a really beautiful sound. And I use this a lot. I've used it in shows like The Americans and True Blood. And um, let's see here. So yeah, basically it's got. I love that. It's got such a, I'm, I'm assuming, so you've got a little bit of processing, you got some reverb on there, maybe a little bit of delay, so it's got that big resonant feel to it. Exactly, and it, and it can do scary, it can do beautiful, it sort of does lots of different things, which is one of the things I like about it. So uh, how, so talk to me about, I mean, I'm, as you're on your way to your next spot, when you're doing music for True Blood or for you know one of these shows, do you watch the scene first and get a feel for okay, this is the feeling we need to evoke exactly that's exactly what it is basically um music exists in film and television to help tell the story and oftentimes it's used to help evoke whatever emotion the characters are feeling and so yeah as a composer i just grab one of these instruments and i watch the scene and i just start trying to plug into emotionally what's going on in the scene and then use these instruments to do that so i um, man i love that it's funny because you know i've talked to I talk to people who swear that they don't really like music, you know, nah, I'm not really a music person or whatever. Wow. But the reality yeah. is all you have to do is show them a movie and then take the music out of it and say, are you sure you're not a music person? Because yeah. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? Like it's, it's so naked without that accompanying emotion that you provide to it. It would be, it would be a really different experience. I get to see films before there's music in it and before there are sound effects in it. And without those two, it's a totally different experience. It's kind of, Probably half the experience of what you ultimately get once, yeah. you, once you add the dollars. Yeah. Right. So this is a uh, uh, big uh, scoring stage, it's called. It's where we record music for movies and television. And so I get like a probably about a 50-piece orchestra in here. Um, and so I, uh, let's see, I just did a film that comes out um, end of this year called Uncle Frank. Uh, and we recorded a 30-piece orchestra in here. And it's got a really beautiful sound so and it's yeah. totally isolated from the outside so it's, it's, it's really cool um, so this is another instrument that again plays on that sort of idea of a hurdy-gurdy this is an instrument that I uh, invented with the luthier it's basically a five string cello um, but what makes it special is it has this little round wheel again like the hurdy-gurdy and when I press this pedal it spins that wheel and makes a drone
Yeah, and it's it's a California black walnut. It's unusual wood for a cello. And then this little dude up here uh, it was based on a walking stick head that we saw at the Louvre. And uh, he's like a little puck, you know, like a little horned kind of devil guy. And uh, we thought that'd be fun. So the, the man who made this cello carved that out of wood. That's um, incredible. So what do you what do you call this instrument? I mean, you've how many people have invented an instrument? One and two. What do you name it when you do invent one? It's called a sympathetic drone cello. Um, so it's got these sympathetic strings, which you see in Indian music. And like the nickel harpa, if I play the main strings, those vibrate. Hear that buzz? Yeah, then my little mascots just joined. This is Muppet. And then Billy is somewhere. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so yeah, so that's, that's what this instrument's called. And it is a really special instrument. I've used this quite a bit. I just used it on a show at Amazon called Carnival Row. Um, and then um, I've used it, yeah, sort of all over the place. Man, that's gorgeous. Is, Thank you. Are, there, are there other artists that are picking it up and playing it as well? Or is you keeping uh, this kind of in just, your own quiver? No, just in here. It's the only one in the world I know of that actually has a mechanical drone built into it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, this is an upright piano that's currently on its back. And I sawed the keys off, so... Um, basically, um, this is the piano harp, and what it allows me to do is to get in here and play the actual strings without getting in the way of the keys and stuff. So I could do, you know, I could play it with pencils, and I can make sort of scarier sounds, or sort of more uh, pretty sounds. have all these sort of different options for, for making these cool, cool cues. You can sort of turn it into its own instrument. That's incredible. So it's like, it's like a kind of a big adapted hammered dulcimer in a way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's very much that. Um, we've had a lot of fun with that. It, that um, looks, it, it looks and sounds like the main instrument in a in the horror soundtrack quiver oh interesting it's it's it a big open kind of haunting tone to it yeah totally it's featured in i used it a lot in true blood and then it's featured in the americans too if you listen to the main title of the americans that's the sound you hear a lot um yeah uh so these are really rare they're called shaker chimes they're built by a guy named jc deegan in chicago around 1900 and uh, they are basically wind chimes. So if you look at them, you know, you've got this bar here. So you've got these cool chimes and then you can play them. They're laid out like a keyboard. So if you look here, two, three, two, three, those are your black keys. And then you've got uh, your white keys here. Oh my gosh. So you've got that cool sound there, um, and they're they're wow. really yeah they're based they're based on an Indonesian instrument called an angklung, and instead of a, a metal chime, there it's bamboo. And so I think probably J C Deegan saw that angklung and said, let's try this with with metal chimes. Um, Is this are these in? Uh, in you know like Handel's Messiah and that kind of thing or are they what they, they you know they're rarer than that they're just not around um, but they're they, but yes that would be the kind of piece absolutely that you you could use them for um, yeah anytime you need chimes you might see these in an orchestra pit and when they get to a chime section then they can follow the melody you know they can follow that it kind of reminds me of steel drums a little bit you know the mallets on the yeah so. yeah yeah that's incredible. Yeah. Um, so this is an instrument that my friend Mark and I, Mark will be playing the organ for you, um, that we sort of invented and built together. Um, we call it a Stoutophone after a famous organ builder named Ed Stout, organ restorer. And basically what it allows me to do is to take all these different kinds of organ pipes 
and put them into this instrument and then experiment with them. So when I pulled this out, uh, I just turned on a wind machine that's back on the other side of the building because it's a little noisy. So this thing is filling up with wind right now. Back in the day, it's a little, it would have been pedaled. We got rid of that. And so now I can make all these crazy sounds. <laughs> kind of instrument you know that's i mean these are like the original synth you know these are analog yeah, synth machines that you've created that's exactly right and that's what an organ is it's really a pipe organ is a very early synth orchestra the, the intent was to give one person the potential to create music as beautiful and various and lush as a as an orchestra um so yeah that's what these that's what this one is um this is called uh a nail organ. Um, so this is uh, basically the only thing that makes it an organ is it looks like organ pipes. But each one of these nails um, makes a pitch when you rub it. I put so I got this rosin here, which is like the rosin you put on a bow, but it's been crushed up. And so I put it on my fingers, and then when I rub these. Kind of an interesting sound, and so you could use That's... that sort of as a as a background behind something else, and it's it's a sound that that is somewhat you can't place it. Which is yeah, no, I mean. absolutely. That I've never seen anything like that. It's, it's yeah, yeah. I can, but I can feel somebody sneaking up behind me while you play it. It's like that kind of <laughs> you know tippy toeing yeah, yeah, behind. <laughs> so maybe I'll just really quickly show the upstairs, and then we can come back down. Yeah, that. sure. This over here is called uh, a street organ. Um, this is, uh, again, an instrument you often would have seen on a, on a street corner. Someone would be turning the wheel playing it, and then you'd see the little monkey, little, basically the monkey grinder, going around for money. Um, but it is an organ, and it's got this book. Kind of like a fire piano, but instead of a roll, it's it's a book. And I feed this in here, and then I turn this wheel, and this wheel pumps a bellows, and it pulls this across these keys in here, and then it makes music. So how many instruments are in that one piece? Yeah, so if you look in here, these are all your organ pipes, okay? And then you've got a drum, a snare drum, and a cymbal, and a wood block, and some other drums. They really try it again to give one person the ability to make a lot of music and a lot of noise. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool instrument. That technology is super old. It's a couple hundred years old, probably, this idea of pulling these old papers across this key it's made, uh, to make it. Well, to make man, what I love about it is how old it is, and yet when you look at the paper, it looks like a MIDI path, right? Like it's... It's, it's exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's a piano roll page of your sequencer, you know what I mean? So, so have you ever composed something specifically for one of these instruments, like your own thing? <laughs> I have, and actually that one is outfitted with, I had, when they built it, I asked them to put in a MIDI, uh, a, basically a MIDI unit, so I could actually sit at an electronic keyboard, my controller, and actually play that. No pretty, way! Pretty amazing, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's kind of weird because it's not chromatic. Um, the bottom end becomes diatonic or not even, you'll just get like C and then an F and a G. But it's, it's really fun to play and really interesting. So, I mean, is there anybody else I've never, I've never seen anybody doing what you're doing at your studio. Is this, obviously it's very rare, but is, can you think of anybody it's else? It's rare. I'd hate to say that I'm the only one doing it because there's so many, you know, interesting people out there doing interesting stuff, but it's definitely, yeah, definitely I hear that a lot, that this is like pretty unusual stuff and, and that's, it's fun. 
Um, this is from 1915. It's by the same guy who built the shaker chimes downstairs in Chicago. And it's basically a really loud xylophone. It's not working right now, or glockenspiel rather. It's not working right now, but these are your, your bars. And then these play, and there's a key, keyboard on the other side. And then this is something you would have put at a political rally or a fairground, and it, it is so deafeningly loud. You can hear it over a big crowd and make music. Um, when it is working, you I, I, you gotta like have your plugs in because it's so. <laughs> um, this is uh, an old instrument from 1830 called the euphonicon, um, and it's uh, basically an early upright piano. Um, these are the bass strings. Uh, the guy just basically took the the length of the bass strings, and obviously in a contemporary upright as we know it. These bass strings are tilted this way, and then you build a box around it. So he just ran them up, let them be the length they are straight up, and then made this beautiful iron harp. And it weighs like 600 pounds. It's so heavy. But um, it's, uh, it's got, uh, it needs some restoration, but we've had some fun with it. Just Yeah, that's cool. You can do muting and kind of play it your own way, huh? Exactly. Um, this is the uh, this is some of the original crew from 1928 that built the pipe organ. I'm about to show you next. So these are the actual guys that built it in the Wurlitzer factory in upstate New York. And let me take you down there now and show you that. So how long have you been collecting instruments for? Uh, you know, honestly, since I was really young, probably since I was nine or ten years old, and then it got more and more eclectic as I learned more and more about what was out there. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to my friend Mark now, who's, who's a wonderful organist, and he's going to play this very special instrument. If you've seen The Sound of Music, the movie, you've heard this instrument. Um, so this is Mark. Hi. Um, Hello. Um, and and uh, this instrument here uh, was built in 1928, uh, and it was very, it's got a very long history in the movies. You will see um, Mark's hands flying around here, and every single sound you're going to hear is a real analog instrument. Um, uh, so, so if you hear something that sounds like a cymbal, it's really a cymbal, and I'm going to take you up and show you that stuff after. Um, Nathan, this tour has been amazing. The instruments are it's fascinating, um, and I cannot wait to hear the organ. But before we hear it, is there uh, specific kids and hospitals you'd like to dedicate the, the performance to? Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I love um, this. is a really special performance that Mark is going to do to show off the organ, and uh, we'd love to dedicate this and send uh, love and hugs to Kaylin and Parker in Washington, to Zachary in New Mexico, and then a little closer to home, the wonderful hospitals that are doing so much great work, especially now as we all go through this period: Kaiser Permanente, USC Medical Center, Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital, and Harbor UCLA Medical Center. Thank you all so much for your incredible work. Uh, and this piece is something Mark has concocted. I think it's a, when was this written, Mark? Um, about 1950. 1950. I, I can't wait to hear it. So it's called Roller Coaster, so we have to start at the theme park.
My word, Mark, well done. That is incredible. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you. And Mark, just talk a little bit about how long you've been playing and when you started. And <clears throat> uh, Yeah, so I, I, ever since I was, you know, one or two years old, I was obsessed with anything with a keyboard and, you know, with a piano and an organ has more keyboards, more buttons, more everything. So by the time I was seven, I was playing these things and they are just, so much fun because it's like playing an entire symphony orchestra live with just one person. So it can really go anywhere you want it to go. Yeah, and Mark is, uh, you know, Mark is um, being modest, but he really started, as he said, he started playing it when he was seven years old and he was concertizing just a couple years later. So <laughs> he, he really um, gravitated to this instrument immediately in a very special way that, that many of the players who play this do. It's really very unusual and, and incredible. No, it looks like something, like you say, I mean, if that's something that's kind of been a passion of yours for almost ever, you would have to feel very at home sitting in front of that instrument because it's incredibly intimidating. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of possibilities here. <laughs> let me, so, so what we could do is let me take you upstairs now into the actual guts of the organ so you can see some of what's making this sound. And Mark will stay down here at the keyboard and we can kind of show you what that yes, is. Yes, thank you. So then was Mark triggering the piano that's in the corner, right? He's... Correct, yes. And that, so when you, when you look at a theater organ, you have to kind of expand your idea of what a pipe organ is. Um, because companies like Wurlitzer back in the early 1900s said, hey, we, we, we can make this a much bigger, cooler thing to help accompany silent films. So this organ takes up six rooms. So, so, so this is one of the rooms. Everything you see in here is from the 1920s. And this is all your wind lines. Or all the wind is coming into these regulators, which change the pressure and send it up to pipes above us. So right now, as I'm talking to you, we're standing under about 800 pipes. Um, and so all of these mechanics are original to the organ. And this organ is particularly special because it was Again, it was built for Fox Studios in 1928. So if you've seen The Sound of Music, when she gets married, this is the organ you hear. Uh, it was used in, uh, John Williams has used it many times in Home Alone, which is Beastwick. Um, so it, it's got a really rich history in Hollywood. And um, all the studios used to have one back in the day. Um, and this was really one of the only surviving ones as far as um, Hollywood studios go. So up these spiral stairs, uh, we're going to go into one of the coolest rooms of the organ, and this is, I'm going to put this, I'm gonna, oh, sorry, I'm going to put those on Harry because it's very loud in here. Um, and so, so right away, when most people see, they hear pipe organ, they don't picture this room. And if you look around here, you've got an actual marimba. Can you play the marimba, Mark? <laughs> And then you've got uh, a celeste here. And then up there, you've got an actual set of you know, wind chimes, which he can trigger from down there. Uh, this is a uh, glockenspiel. sound effects which are so cool uh, you've got so if you were playing a silent film and you were do you were you were doing a horse chase uh, you have this actual these two things that look like coconuts and you could play them as the organist and create the sound for the horse and then you've got an actual so if you're being chased by the police in a great old Harold Lloyd film you had this uh, whistle police whistle which you could do and if the, if the fire engine showed up, you had this. Ah! So you, when you hear that idea of bells and whistles, that's what it was. That's an actual slide whistle, which it'll fire. Um, so yeah, it's got sort of all these really cool instruments in it. Um, these are cathedral chimes here. With a, with a creative note from Mark. So this is the non-pipe part of the organ. 
And now we'll go in here and look at this. Look at these huge pipes. So these are, some of these pipes are 12 feet tall, some of them are taller. And these are the bass notes. Um, Mark, can you play some of the bass in the main chamber? So you've got all these amazing old pipes. So everything you see in here again was made by hand in 1928 at the factory in upstate New York. Can you play the sort of the tuba pipes? And then the highest pipes um, are these guys here, which I can actually look at. So if you look at that, that's a, that's a pipe next to that giant pipe. You realize the incredible uh, range of an organ. And that's like a dog whistle. That's how high that is. Mark, can you just play the highest notes in here? Just a little quick thing. Pretty amazing, huh? That's incredible. Um, so this is one of two rooms of pipes. And now I'll take you over to the other side, which is called a solo chamber. And we'll look at some more of the pipes. And what I want to show you in here with my head, I'm going to put my head down here, is this is um, a low C. And just watch what happens to my hair when the wind comes out of it. So there's a huge amount of air you need to play just that single note. And you've got all these other pipes in here. This is called a tibia rank, this set of pipes. Um, you've got actual like saxophone pipes, trumpet pipes. So it's just a, it's like a, a mechanical wonder. It is. And these really exist. They the, basically, companies like Worlds took the idea of a church organ. They said, okay, what can we do to really help make an audience's experience watching a silent film even better. Like we discussed before, music is such an important part of it. So they took took the organ and said, all right, we're going to add all this stuff to it, put it in a movie theater, have an organist play live to silent film, and it's going to really make it a better experience, which it which it did. So pretty cool. Wow. So this is the this is the type of organ that would have been set up in a silent movie theater type of thing, right? Correct. To create exactly. exactly. It's very specifically. It's called um, it's called a cinema organ or a or a theater organ. Um, and so that's, that's what's up here. Um, and it was used in the Adams family last year. My friends um, Jeff, uh, Jeff Dana and uh, Mike Dana used it up there. And then there's another composer named Danny Elfman who used it in The Grinch two years ago. And then I used it um, in, a, in a film called The House with a Clock in Its Walls. So we're getting it right back into film where it belongs. And this is the, yeah. this is the computer system where it uh, which, which is basically what allows the keyboard to talk to each of the pipes. Every one of these little cables goes up into this bundle, and at the end of that cable is a pipe or a, or a mallet or something. So wow, where did, where did you transport this from, and how, what was the process to get it to where it's at? Yeah, so it was a really long, crazy process. Um, it was installed in 28 in Fox. It was pulled out in about 97, 98. Uh, and then I went ahead and um, bought it from the gentleman who took his family took care of it for years when it was at Fox Studios. So I bought it from him and it was a five year restoration. His name was Ken Chrome. He just passed away a couple weeks ago. Um, he was one of the great, uh, great living restorers of these instruments. And then I literally built, as you can see, this entire building around the instrument. So we built six, six rooms specially just for the organ. And then the process of making the organ sound really great in this room, because an organ has super high notes, super low notes, it also sounds great for uh, uh, orchestra and everything else. So, wow, yeah. So that's that's kind of the nickel tour. Man, I it's it's honestly stunning and kind of staggering. It's hard to take it all in. You know, I mean, you've created a music <laughs> citadel. It's like, you know, it's like, it's. It is like a tribute to the the beauty and the power and the passion of music, you know? I it, it is and, and like the the ingenuity and the minds that went into like how can we make music mechanically? How can we give one person even a bigger palette to play with? It's just like the the genius of the minds that that created all these instruments. It's, it's just so special, especially culminating in the pipe organ. So Incredible. I have a super important question to ask in relation to all of yes. that. 
do you have a guest bedroom? Because I really want to come <laughs> nice. down and just I, spend some time. I have time. two couches. I have two couches. You're welcome to either one upstairs. So, <laughs> Man, it's, it is really amazing. Thank you so much for just taking the time yes. to kind of show us around your world and, uh, and, you know, bring some of these kids that don't have the opportunity to get into a space like that and walk them through it because it's magical. Yeah, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm really happy to share it. I love that. I built this place not to keep it for myself, but so people could come in and really experience it. So this is exactly the, the kind of thing that I love to do. So thanks. Thanks for thinking of me. Thank you. Are, are there any final words you want to leave, you know, kind of with the world as we're going through all this? Yeah, I mean, I just think like one of the one of the great things that has come out of this whole quarantine around the world is seeing all the the incredible creative energy people have put into um, bringing a smile to people's faces, whether it's orchestras broken up into their individual homes, making music together, um, or uh, people writing spe special things just for this time period. I love seeing that creative force come through the sort of inherent uh, tragedy of, of what's going on and, and, and uh, bringing, lifting the human spirit. So it's, it's been really great. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing your creativity with all of us. I appreciate it a ton. I, speaking of creativity, I had one question I was going to ask you and you can yep. use any instrument you want anywhere, but what would the opening movement to the uh, COVID-19 or the isolation soundtrack be? <laughs> Oh boy. I mean, I, I think probably when it first happened, it would just be like some, some of these, if you play some of the lowest bass notes. <laughs> it's kind of like a humorous spin on this, but they, uh, let's keep it light and happy. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, man. Nathan, thank you so much. Yeah, really, absolutely. really my appreciate pleasure. it. Truly my pleasure. Thank you all so much for joining us. If you or someone you know is battling illness and needs support, you are not alone. Sign up today at MelodicCaring.org. And a huge thank you to all our first responders and healthcare providers working so hard during this COVID-19 crisis. We appreciate you. I'm Levi Ware. This is the Melodic Caring Project.